Hello, welcome to this lesson on physical and chemical properties and changes. To start off, I need you to list three characteristics about the way you look and three characteristics of your personality. All right, a physical property is going to describe the way that something looks, smells, how it changes, um, how it feels, and those are going to be properties typically that can be measured, but sometimes they are going to be more qualitative things like, um, you know, my hair is kind of this brownish red color, my eyes are green, I am, you know, five foot six inches tall. Those are things that would describe my physical appearance. Those would be physical properties. Some examples of physical properties are things like color, texture, like this pine cone is very rough, the sample size, and this means in both mass and length, um, volume, any type of size um, is going to be a physical property. We also have buoyancy, which is it's the substance's ability to float. The boiling point, the temperature at which the substance boils. The melting point. Um, and then, like I said, mass, volume, density, everything related to the sample's size. And then we can move on to chemical properties, which is way more fun, in my opinion. Chemical properties describe the way that a substance react or does not react, and that's going to be based on the number of valence electrons. Now, for you and me, chemical properties are kind of like our personality. So I am very sarcastic. I am also very honest, almost to a fault. And I, um, I love to have a good time. So those are things that would describe my personality. And that's kind of like my chemical properties. So it's going to describe the way that you react in certain situations. If you're at a party, you're probably having a good time. Perhaps your idea of a good time is sitting on the couch just watching Netflix shows. That's that's a fun time too. Um, so your personality may be a little bit more reserved. So you might be something like a noble gas that doesn't like to react very much. It's inert. Um, so a chemical property is kind of like the personality of this element or compound. So when it comes to chemical properties, we ask ourselves questions most often like, will this substance oxidize in air? So like this apple turning brown once it's exposed to oxygen. We would ask, does it rust or corrode when in contact with air? Is that substance flammable? Does it react with other chemicals, which is really what we talk about in chemistry most often. Um, here we have the formation of a precipitate. So you mix two liquids together, two solutions really, and you wind up, they react and they form a solid. Here, this is probably vinegar and baking soda, and that is going to generate a gas, fills the balloon. Um, sometimes things react and other times things don't, like baking soda in your kitchen doesn't really react all that much. Um, it doesn't react with the air, but it will react with vinegar. If properties are adjectives, then physical and chemical changes are verbs. So um, a physical change is where uh, a change is made, but nothing new is formed. So really, this means we're not breaking or forming bonds. All phase changes are physical changes. So if we think of boiling or freezing water, on the other side of that boiling or freezing, water is still water. It might just be ice or steam or something like that. Um, it's going to change from one form to another, but it's still going to be water. And that's the important piece here. So like I said, melting and freezing are prime examples of physical changes. So is breaking, smashing, cracking, boiling, another phase change, crushing. So if you took a can and crushed it, or if you took a really big crystal and crushed it down kind of into a dust, like crushing salt into something smaller. Um, bending is one, of course, and anything, of course, that is going to just change kind of the way it looks. Um, is going to be a physical change. Now, the opposite of that is a chemical change. In a chemical change, you have an entirely new substance formed because you have bonds breaking, atoms rearranging, and new things forming. And all chemical reactions are considered chemical changes. Um, it's just when we are big boy, big girl chemists, a lot of the time we talk about chemical reactions as opposed to chemical changes. It's really just the verbiage. 
So a chemical change or signs that a chemical reaction has happened is going to be indicated by a color change. Here again, you have the apple oxidizing in air. It turns brown. Avocados do this. Um, potatoes. There are lots of things that will change color just because they're exposed to oxygen. Then we have formation of a gas. So here again, the vinegar and baking soda is going to fill this balloon. We have that formation of a precipitate. So anytime these two solutions come in contact with each other, they form a solid and that solid is called a precipitate. I'll teach you a lot more about that when we get to solutions. Um, anytime you have a new smell, a new smell, um, whether that is like a rotten grilled cheese sandwich, which is very yucky, or um, the baking of a cake or the baking of bread. You get this nice, beautiful smell. Anytime you get a new smell, that's a chemical reaction. Um, anytime you change the temperature, if you dramatically, well, I shouldn't say dramatically, anytime you change the temperature where you personally didn't put the substance on ice or in the fridge, you didn't try to heat it up, perhaps you just mixed two chemicals together and they got really cold or they got really hot. And then another one that's not listed here is the generation of light. Uh, so that would include fire, which is a very common light reaction, but also you have um, like the cracking of a glow stick. Those two chemicals come in contact and then they start to glow. So physical and chemical changes to recap physical things are um, physical properties describe kind of like the five senses, the way that things look, feel, smell, that kind of thing. A physical change is where you are going to kind of rearrange the, the three-dimensional structure of this thing. You might have a piece of paper and then whoosh, rip it and now you got <laughs> two smaller pieces of paper um, that does not work with money, but it's still paper. A chemical property is going to describe the way that things do or do not react. Um, and their chemical changes are really just chemical reactions, which is them kind of expressing one of those chemical properties. So we know that paper is flammable, that's a chemical property, and uh, the paper being on fire would be the chemical change. That's all I have for you on physical and chemical properties and changes. I know it was really quick, but that's because Number one, it's kind of just vocabulary. Two, I'm sure you have learned this before. And three, if it was too quick, you have the ability to go back and replay the video. Please leave any questions you have in the comment section below the video. Subscribe so you don't miss the next lesson and I will see you there. Bye.